Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my follow-ups series. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first. I'll put a link down below. You can click on that to go watch it. In part two, we're going to add a follow-up date to the contact form and then on our follow-ups form. We'll make it so when you click this little button here, the date will either display or hide. Ooh, ah. And then we'll sort the dates so that our follow-ups show up in order chronologically. And, uh, yeah, some other cool stuff. So here we go. And we're back to the follow-ups series. Welcome to part two. If you haven't watched part one yet, well, go get over there and watch it right now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up follow-up dates for each of these. Because if I talk to, let's say, Deanna Troy today, I might send her over a proposal and I, you know, I'm going to get back to you next week. So I want to put a date in there for that follow-up to show up on my list. And before that date, I don't want to see it. I don't want a big, gigantic, long list of everything here. Then, you, you know, you get the uh, decision paralysis, right? I just want to see the ones I have to call today. Now, this date time field that we have in here already is the contact date time. That's the date time that this was put in the system. Really not that important for your follow-up list. So I'm going to get rid of this one and replace it with the follow-up date. So to start doing that, let's go back to the contact table, design view. And we're going to add a follow-up date. That'll be a date time. Now, I'm not going to put a default value in here because not every follow-up has to have a date. You might just check the box yes and just leave it, right? You don't need necessarily need to put a date in there, but if you want to push it toward the future, like, you know, this guy's going on vacation, I don't have to call him back for a week, then you can mark a date and then you won't see it, okay? So let's save our contact table. And first we're gonna start off with the customer form because this is where you're generally gonna put in your contacts. You know, talked, about whatever follow up in a week okay now for this guy i might mark it a follow up and then we'll put the little box down here and i'm going to while we're at it make this a little bit bigger we got a wee bit more room to type like or so and you know this guy it doesn't matter if it's in the footer or the header i'm going to slide it up here out of the way let's see yeah that's a good spot. it's a little bit too big Okay, so let's go to Add Existing Fields, take our follow-up date, and drag it and drop it right there. Okay. Perfect. Mm, maybe I want it over here on the side. Let's do this. Follow-up. Yeah, let's put the date there. we got more room for activities down here. Now let's open this guy's properties up. Let's go to All. I'm going to set the format equal to Short Date. If you want to have times on yours, if you're that kind of person where, you know, you like to time your follow-up calls to the minute, you know, I'm going to call you at 4.30 on Sunday or whatever, that's fine. Put whatever time format you want in there. If you want to work with times, great. I'm just going to keep it to dates. All right. In my long history of doing sales, I, I almost never had to have them that exact. Some people do. I would just put in the notes over here, you know, call between two and four or whatever. And in case I didn't mention it before and you haven't seen this one of my other videos, I use the ISO date standard, which is year, month, day. That way I got clients all over the world and it prevents my students from having problems with different regional date formats. So I keep all my databases in this format so we're all on the same page. Okay, now I promised in the last video that I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of VBA here and there just to make the database cool. Okay, just so you can see how just with a little teeny tiny bit of VBA, I'm going to tease you. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to make this guy not visible. All right, so let me move this over here so it's not in the way. Open up the properties, go to Format, and set Visible to No. I don't want to see it. All right, that follow-up date field. Unless this is checked on. If this is checked on, then make that visible. If it's checked off, then make it not visible. So to do that, we need to program in two events to do the same thing an after update event for this checkbox. When I click on that, it updates this property to visible or not visible. And I also need an on current event and that will run when you move from record to record. So this will be displayed based on the value of that. If you wanna learn more about these things now, go to after update, watch that video. And the on current event, watch that video too. 
So I'll just start with the after update event for the checkbox here. So I'll go to events, after update, dot, dot, dot. Then I'll bring up my code builder. All right, and I'll say in here, show, hide, follow, update. All right, what does that mean? Well, we're going to make our own subroutine called show, hide, follow, update. Copy that, come down here, type in private, sub, show, hide, follow, update. Now, whatever happens in here, is what's going to run when the follow-up after update goes. It's going to run this, which is going to come down here and run this. Why did I do that? Well, I'm going to make its own subroutine out of it because I'm going to call it from two different places. I'm also going to call it from the forms on current event. So in here, I'm just going to put follow-up date dot visible equals follow-up. Okay, now follow-up is a true or false value. So if it's checked on and follow-up is true, I want the follow-up date to be visible. If it's not, it'll make it false. Okay, save it. Let's close this. Let's open it back up again. And now just check the box. Look at that. See, that date appears. See? Okay, and we also have to call the same thing from the on current event. So that same code runs in the on current event. So go back to your code window. We can do it this way. Well, let me show you the, the, other, the easiest way to get to it. Go into here, design view, double click here for the form properties, events, and then on current. You hit the dot, dot, dot here. The other way I was going to show you, I'm more used to doing it this way. You drop this box down, you pick form. Now it's going to put you in the form load event, just to ignore that, and go in here and go to current. Now you're in the form current event. We copy this, we paste it in there, and we get rid of this. That's that simple. And now we can close this and close this. Let's reopen it. Save changes. Yes. And there we go. We click on that one. Click on this one. It hides it. See, no follow-up. Click here. No follow-up. Click there. And you can see there's follow-ups in there. Okay. There you go. Now, you might want to have it so that when you click this box, tomorrow's date goes in there as a default. If you turn this off, maybe delete it. And we can do that by adding some additional code into the after update event. You can say right here with a little if then statement, if follow up, then, all right, so they've checked on the follow up value. We're going to say follow up date equals date plus one, else follow up date equals null, end if. And let's see what happens. Check it on. It's set to tomorrow. Today is December 21st. Turn it off, and it sets it to null. You can verify that by looking in the table. Let's do this. Talked about whatever follow-up in a week. Where are you? Talked about whatever follow-up in a week, and it is set to null. Okay? And it never hurts to throw a me.refresh at the end of that. Because if you look... Here, let me, let me run this out real quick and show you what's going on. Um, if you look, whenever I click this button... Now, notice that record is dirty. That means it hasn't been saved to the table yet. So a me.refresh on the end of that forces access to save it to the table immediately as soon as you click on that box. Ready? Click. See? It's no longer dirty. Okay. Okay, now let's take this follow-up date and let's put this over on the follow-ups form on here, which is a little more useful. I am going to change this to follow-up date, and we'll change from contact date to follow-up date. I'm going to change this to short date. We don't need times in here. And don't forget to change the name of the box as well. Okay. And it doesn't need to be that big. We can shrink it down just a little bit. And let's put this on the right side. You beam in. Here they come. There they are. <laughs> That's my hourly chime, in case you're interested. Okay, so there's follow-up, and let's just make this date. Too many word follow-ups in there. Okay. That looks better. All right, save it, close it, open it, and there's our follow-ups and follow-up dates. Not all of them have dates in there, and that's okay. You know, we got to follow up at some point. In fact, let's do this. I think that with a little training, the user will understand what this means. 
we'll do that. Slide that in there. Bring that. Yeah. Then we got more room for the description. And don't forget, you can use that whole notes bottom as well. Yeah, I like the way that looks better. Save that, close it, open it up. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's edit our underlying query. So these guys are sorted by date. So let's go to that follow-up queue, design view. We're going to add in our follow-up date, hide it so we don't get duplicates, and then we're going to sort this. Let's sort it ascending so the oldest ones show up on top. Save it. Close it, open it back up again, and there you go. Yes, there is a way to have it so that null values sort on the bottom of the list. It's a little more tricky. I do cover that in Access Developer 26. But now if you do come in here and give these guys dates, let's say this one's going to be, uh, you know, 1223, and this one is going to be uh, January 4th of next year. Okay, when you close this and reopen it, there you go, they're in order. And in part three, I'm going to show you how to set it so that you don't see any follow-ups that are in the future, and we'll make a little button you can click on so you can or cannot see them, so you do or do not see them. Sometimes you might want to go say, okay, what are my follow-ups for tomorrow looking like? Okay, we'll do that in part three. So there you go. There's your part two. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. See you next time for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.